It's so good to be here this morning. You know, my prayer as a minister on a Sunday morning isn't that I say something inspiring that uh, is new to you. You know, my prayer, and it's the great honor of being a minister here at Mile High, is to represent your wisdom. My prayer is that something comes from my soul and my voice that speaks to you, something you already know within you. And so my prayer is that you hear something like that today. I'd like to begin by telling a story about an ancient Chinese philosopher named Xuanzi. And Xuanzi was fishing in the river one day when representatives of the king came to visit him to plead and to ask him to come be the prime minister of the country. And Xuanzi replied, Is it true that the king has a thousand-year-old tortoise? Yes, the representatives replied. It's wrapped in silks and placed upon the most beautiful altar in all of the kingdom. Well, tell me, Xuanzi asked, would you prefer to be a thousand-year-old tortoise wrapped in silks on an altar, or would you rather be a living turtle here in this river dragging your tail in the mud? And the representatives had to admit that they'd rather be the living turtle dragging its tail in the mud. Well, Xuanzi said, you go back to your kingdom. I'm going to stay here dragging my tail in the mud. And it's a simple story, but it's powerful to me for two reasons. First, that most important spiritual lesson, enjoy your life. Enjoy life. Accolades are great. Accomplishments are great. But so is having fun and being present. Second, very rare that you get a spiritual story where the hero says no. You know, normally that leads to being in the belly of a whale, you know, not answering the call. But Schwingsa says, no. And it speaks to my message topic today. The incredible creative power of no. My message today is that no can be as important an affirmation as yes when applied correctly. For a lot of us, we don't like using this word no because we see it as a negative. If I say no, I might be seen as being rude. If I say no, I might look like I'm not a team player, like I don't want to help out, that it's only my self-interests that are important to me. If I say no, it might in a spiritual sense be like denying God's will because every opportunity is created for me by the universe to accept and step into, and before you know it, you're overwhelmed. You know, being a minister, I've had to learn, especially in the, the busyness of big church, to, to say no uh, around protecting that most important yes to put God first in my life, to put that spiritual practice in the morning that Michelle was talking about first. If I couldn't do that, what I know, it doesn't mean that everything else comes second. It means that if I didn't put that spiritual practice first, I wouldn't be able to put others first. I wouldn't have the full cup to be able to do what I do. And many of us, perhaps we don't think we have a problem saying no, but pay attention to these possible symptoms. Do you, you ever feel like you live more on someone else's clock than your own? Do you ever feel taken advantage of, or perhaps even a little resentful of people you work with or people you love? Do you ever feel like your talents and abilities aren't properly being fully utilized in your life? Or do you ever feel close to that experience called burnout? So many of us who've been working from home during this coronavirus time, we, we've learned that we have trouble saying no because it never seems like we can stop working. We're always wondering, did I do enough that the things that really matter to us in life can sometimes suffer? This is where no becomes so vital and important. So I'm going to invite you wherever you are to say it, it with me. No. Repeat after me. No. 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 Now let's try to say it in, in a positive sense. No. No, thank you. 
I've considered your request, and I've decided the answer is no. <laughs> yeah, it's not too hard, is it? <laughs> In this time of coronavirus, for many of us with busy lives, perhaps the only thing we're sure of right now is we don't want to go back to the busyness of the way things used to be. You know, in this time, and what better time to stop and ask ourselves, am I living a life that is truly satisfactory to my heart and my soul, to how I want to be living? And perhaps the answer isn't a full-out no, perhaps it, but perhaps it's not entirely yes. Perhaps there's more that we can do, both with what to say yes to and to say no to, to help us live in greater harmony with our own being. Greg McKeown wrote a great book several years ago called Essentialism, and he puts it simple. He says, if you don't prioritize your life, someone else will. If you don't prioritize your life, someone else will. And he has this powerful statement about our choices. He says, if you have correctly identified what really matters, if you invest your time and energy into it, then it is difficult to regret the choices you make. You become proud of the life you have chosen to live. And so I want to talk about some strategies today to utilize, emphasize, and manifest that powerful, incredible word and choice called no. The first thing is to realize that no can be the other side of yes. No is the other side of yes. Now, before no can be the other side of yes, you have to really know in your life what you're saying yes to. So take a moment. What is it in your life that you want to most say yes to? For me, I want to say yes to being more present and loving of the people I care about most, my wife and children especially. I want to say yes to creative time, to read and write and just simmer in my own spirit. I want to say yes to being um, in physical well-being, to taking good care of myself. You see, for me, and I don't know about for you, those yeses are actually easy choices to make. It's making the no's that protect those choices that's difficult for me. It's easy to say yes to being present and loving to my family. It's freaking hard to say no to putting my cell phone away. Stop checking those emails. It's easy for me to say yes to creative personal time. It's hard for me to say no to that last minute meeting request, to not pick up that phone call of someone I want to be there for. It's easy for me to say yes to being thin, so hard for me to say no to eating that cupcake that's offered to me. See, when we truly design a creative life, our no's exist to protect our yes. In the game of life, we might say, your yeses are your offense. They're all directed at fulfilling your goals, to score in that touchdown. But you have to have a defense, too. And your no's are your defense. Your no's are there to protect your goal, to help ensure where it is that you want to reach in your life. And if you're missing one, you're missing the other. But they can work together strongly. I was once working with an incredible young woman who had been in a relationship for a couple years that wasn't going anywhere. And so uh, her question was, how can I break up with this guy? I've tried to, and yet the conversation always goes around how he's not behaving the way that I want him to. And so what happens is he promises to change his behavior, does for about a week, and then things go back to uh, where they've been. And this guy wasn't a bad guy, he was a great guy, but he wasn't in alignment with what she really wanted. You know, and how do you break up with someone in the time of coronavirus these days? You know, do you just change your relationship status on Facebook without telling them? Do you pr try uh, only texting and emojis for a while? Do you say this quarantine thing's working really good for me? I'm just going to stay at home. You know, it's amazing all the dishonest ways we can create sometimes because we're afraid to be honest, because we're afraid to be direct, because we're afraid to say no. 
And so this incredible young woman, what she did is she really took time to clarify her yes. What is it that I really and truly want in a relationship? I want a mutually supportive relationship. I want someone not to just hang out with and enjoy life with, but someone who's dedicated to their own personal growth and our own growth as a couple. I want to be with someone who wants to have children and raise a family. I want someone who's committing, committed through partnership to building a great life. When she got clear on what she really wanted, it was so clear that the relationship she was in was over. Because no longer was it about him. No, matter was it, no, no longer was it about what she didn't want. Now it was all about her yes. And the breakup was complete. Was he disappointed? Yes. But not only did she break up with him, but she also broke up with that kind of relationship because of her clarity about what she wanted in her life. When you allow no to be the other side of yes, we live a double affirmation with great clarity. Second strategy, the next time you say no, say yes. The next time you say no, say yes. Let me explain what I mean by that. Say no out loud, but within, affirm what you're saying yes to. Let me get back to that cupcake. When someone says, Josh, would you like this delicious cupcake? And I say, no, thank you. I am lying. I want that cupcake. And, you know, I try to be an authentic person. I, I authentically want that cupcake. I authentically want five cupcakes. But my answer is no thank you when I can remember my yes. My big yes, which is I want to be healthy. I want to have a routine of taking care of myself. Without that yes, my no breaks down. So using that no to protect that big yes allows us to realize that there's no such thing as a no in negative terms. It's only there to build up the strength of our yes. In McCown's book, Essentialism, he tells the story told to him by a woman named Cynthia who happened to be the daughter of the late, great Stephen Covey who wrote Seven Habits for Highly Effective People. And they had planned this uh, father-daughter date for quite some time. They were going to go to San Francisco, they were going to take the train car, they were going to get off and uh, go shopping, have dinner at a Chinese restaurant, and then go catch a movie. So they get off the train car, and immediately Covey runs into uh, an old college friend and business associate. They hug and they embrace, and they're talking for a few minutes, and, and the man says, you know what, you two, I'm going to treat you to dinner at the finest restaurant in San Francisco. We're going to have such a good time. Right now, let's go. And Covey responds, that sounds wonderful. And Cynthia shares that in that moment, my heart began to sink. I was so disappointed. But then my father said, but the answer is no. I have very important plans with my very special daughter this evening. And Cynthia shared that in that moment, it bonded me to my father forever because I knew I was a priority to him. How often, perhaps unconsciously, have we said a yes in order to please someone out of fear of saying no and perhaps put a nick or a scratch on a relationship or a bond that's so important to us. McKeown, he shares, learn to say no firmly, resolutely, and yet gracefully. Because once we do, we find not only that our fears of disappointing or angering others were exaggerated, but that people actually respect us more. I have found it almost universally true that people respect and admire those with the courage of conviction to say no. So are you ready to practice using a bit more no in your life? Do you want to say it with me again? No. No. No, thank you. I've considered your offer, and I'm really grateful to tell you no, because my yes is this, and it doesn't have to be offensive. There's nothing more powerful or creative in your life than knowing who you are and knowing what you want. And trust me, no one wants to get in your way 
of fulfilling that vision. Be honest, be willing, and it leads to my third point today, which is about boundaries. The idea that the stronger your boundaries, the better your life. The stronger your boundaries, the better your life. You know, boundaries, like this word no, sometimes has this negative connotation to it. I have a lot of boundaries, which means I have lots of walls. No one can get into my heart. I never let my hair down. Someone who has a lot of boundaries is is very untrusting. But to me, the opposite is true. Boundaries aren't walls. Boundaries are guidelines in which we can share and cultivate intimate and sacred space together. And it's not only so important to know what your boundaries are individually, but in those relationships that matter most to you. When I hear a friend who's getting a a, a divorce or a breakup and they say something like, we just grew further and further apart. I can't help but pause and say, perhaps the problem isn't that you moved further and further apart, it's that you never knew the tools to grow closer and closer together. And that's a challenge for many of us when we look back at our past relationships to the ones now. But to be able to remember that clear boundaries cultivate intimacy, cultivate connection, cultivate honesty, and can cultivate a powerful yes and a powerful no in a way that's mutually supportive. So know what your boundaries are. What are your physical boundaries? You know, if you're on Facebook, put on your safe word. We want to hear what it is. What are your physical boundaries which have to do with touch, but they have to do with your time. They have to do with your your space. Know what your physical boundaries are. Know what your boundaries are around communication. What does it mean to have a safe place to exchange ideas and listen to one another? What are your communication boundaries? You know, we're at a moment in history right now where there are a lot of issues going on in our world that are personally affecting us or we are personally being asked to be a part of. Coronavirus. How soon am I supposed to get back to life as is? What am I supposed to believe about how serious this crisis is and what to do about it? Many of us are being asked to look at at racism in a way that we never have before, to do our part to see what is my stuff that may contribute to a world that's not working for all those around me? Why are dozens of uh, NBA players and athletes refusing to play right now? There are so many important discussions that need to be had, but the boundaries aren't there to connect. So the communication boundaries, I would love to talk about these things with you, but is there listening? Is there a willingness to be non-judgmental? Is there a willingness to have us both deepen in our conversation, to, be, to leave the, the conversation better than we left it. But if it's not safe, I don't want to have the conversation. Having the conversation in your Facebook comment, uh, comment thread probably isn't a safe place. So we want to seek to know what our boundaries are so that we can all do our work to help make our lives better and our communities and society better as well. What are your communication boundaries? And lastly, what are your self-care boundaries? To Michelle's incredible point, you know, how much of your cup do you need to keep filled up to live your life in a way that's thriving? Not just for you, but in supporting those around you. Is it 20 minutes of meditation time in the morning? Is it making sure you get that long walk in three days a week? Is it only watching an hour of news instead of eight hours of news? What are those self-care boundaries where you can say yes and no to yourself in an empowered and powerful way? Because again, it's our ability to know what our yes is, which isn't just a distant star, it's the possibility and the calling of how to live today in our own heart. And when we don't say yes to what our heart wants, we suffer, we stumble, our spirits feel asleep. But as we again nurture our heart's yes and protect it by being willing to say no, we do 
not only what's best for us, but what's best for all those around us. For as our founder Ernest Holmes told us that we, we rob no one when we discover our own good. You take from no one when you discover a greater degree of livingness and live it today. Let's make a commitment to do that. And so there's an affirmation coming up on our screen, and I'm going to invite you wherever you are to say it along with me. I deserve to be happy. I deserve to enjoy my life. I deserve healthy, meaningful, loving relationships. I deserve creative me time. I deserve to say yes. I deserve to say no. And let's take it a step deeper. I choose happiness. I choose to enjoy my life. I choose healthy, meaningful, loving relationships. I choose creative me time. I choose to say yes. I choose to say no. And lastly, take a deep breath here. I use my yes to affirm and choose what I want. I use my no to affirm and choose what I want. Let's have a prayer.